Hi everyone. Um, I uh, firstly, as you might be able to tell from my accent, I am English, and so I might use some terms that are different from American terms. But just uh, tell me, just unmute yourself and let me know if there's anything that's not clear about what I'm saying. Um, secondly, um, these are just things that I do. Um, there are so many different types of sewing techniques and ways in which things can be done. And um, there are different approaches and different ways of doing things. So I'm just gonna show you how I do things. And um, some things might seem more complicated than you might be used to doing them or not, uh, or easier. You know, everyone has slightly different techniques. I didn't train, uh, I didn't kind of, officially train as a seamstress or anything like that. I uh, picked up early sewing from my grandma and my mum and then I taught myself how to sew and then I learnt um, most of what I know at work because I work with clothing. So, um, okay, so the first request is buttons. How to put a button on. So I have, I'm just going to grab my my coat. Um, unfortunately, it's black, so I hope you'll be able to see clearly enough. Just let me know if the image isn't clear or if the angle isn't right, and I'll change it. So I have this coat, and I'm, I want to change the buttons. Um, so I've already cut the old button off, and I've marked where that button needs to go with two pins but you could use whatever you want you don't necessarily have to do that I just did it so that I was ready to start and when you're sewing buttons it's a good idea you need a really you know a good quite thick thread this is just a normal a fairly let me see if I can show you against the white background this is Kind of like that. It's just a standard polyester thread. I'm just going to get my needle out and but the thread's too short. So you want to have quite a long, sorry, you want to have quite a long amount because you're going to double it over. So I would say pull it out. Um, sorry stretch it out like like this roughly that is actually for who doesn't know that is roughly a meter from your from your fingertips to them to to here is more or less a meter just in case anyone wanted to know that cut it and now <clears throat> thread the needle very basic if you've never thread a needle before it's always a good idea to lick the thread just lightly pass it through your lips and then thread it through pull it and make it double so oops i just lost it i've never done live sewing before so this is quite nerve-wracking so pull it through and then you want to tie a knot and I do for buttons especially I do a double knot because um, you want it to be really strong and not pull out so take the same place again I don't know if you can see and knot it again one over the one you've just done so you should get like a fairly fat knot I don't know if you can see it like that okay then right <laughs> now <clears throat> just gonna come on now I can't see what I'm doing so this is the X where the X meets is where I want the button to go from so I'm gonna thread through 
take my pins out so I don't need them anymore and just pull the thread all the way through till you get to the knot so now it shouldn't go any further and now go through again so you're going to do another stitch but in the opposite direction so you're coming out the other way but you, you don't want to go uh, much you, you want to stay very close to where the thread is coming out of the stitch you've just done so pull it through again this is just to secure the thread firmly into the fabric. Um, one thing with buttons that if you can, it's a bit fiddly, but if you can, when you're sewing, when you're putting a button on a thick piece of fabric like this coat, the ideal is to leave a little bit of a gap between the fabric and where the button will actually sit. That way, the other piece of fabric, which will, you know, which has the buttonhole, will be able to sit comfortably between this fabric and the button. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I'll, show, I'll try and show you. So thread the needle through one buttonhole. It doesn't matter which hole it is. So that's on like that. Now, because my, um, fabric is quite fairly thick i'm going to prop my thumb under the button it's a bit fiddly and i'm going to take the needle through another hole whichever one you catch and now when i come down i'm going to catch the fabric and come through and up into the next hole Okay, so this is where the gap now, if you do want to leave a gap, if you're sewing like onto a shirt or something that's got quite thin fabric, then you don't need to worry about this. But if it's thick, when you pull through now, instead of pulling straight and having the button like touch the fabric, just hold it a little bit with your fingers. So there's just like a couple of millimeters gap. And now go through the next hole in the button. When you come down, come down into the fabric in the same place as the other threads are that you've, you've just pulled through. So come down again. Okay, so hopefully now I have four holes in my button. So now each hole has thread um, through it. So the button is now attached. And if you can see, I've left... Um, just this back up. I've got a bit of, if I hold the button, <laughs> this is really tricky to show you, if I hold the button I've got a bit of a gap. Okay, so now I just carry on, hold the button like that and just carry on doing a few more loops through, through the holes and down into the fabric. Always staying you want to get the needle when you come back into the fabric, try and get it as close as you can to the threads that you've already pushed sewn through. And again, now make sure you get each um, side evenly. So I've done two on one side. I'm now doing the second on the other side. And if it's a shirt, probably if you've got four, you know, if you've done two on each side, it might be strong enough. I'm going to go around once more because this is the top button on this coat and I know there's going to be a lot of pull on it from, from, the, from the other side, so I want it to be really secure. So I'm going to come through again and one last time on the other side. Hmm, doesn't look very neat actually, because I'm doing it live, the pressure. Okay, so now that's really secure. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now, again, because I've left this gap to fit the thickness of the fabric from the other side under, this is a trick that you can do which is really good for securing buttons, is you take, let me know if, um, if it's all making sense are you all at, i don't know if anyone else is doing it live but basically now i've got 
I've got a load of thread left. So what I'm going to do is wrap this excess thread around my um, under the button. So I go around just a few times. You don't have to do too much. So basically what it does is it creates a protection uh, for the threads that attach the button to the fabric. So wind it round. Now, always one thing that, weirdly, it took me a while to learn this when I was starting out. Always leave yourself enough thread left over to make your last stitch and tie your knots. Otherwise, you get into that situation where you can't get your needle around to tie your knot. So um, I've actually got a lot of thread left, but I'm going to close it up now. So I'm going to take one more stitch just under all the threads or all the stitches that I've done. I'm just going to pass the needle straight through, pull it out nice and tight. And then now I'm going to tie my knot, pull the needle through like that. And to keep your knot close to the fabric, use your fingers to push the knot through. And I'm going to do another one just because I want it to be extra secure. Push it through, hold it in place with your thumb. And that's it. And then snip, snip it just above the knot. And that's it. So that's, your, that's my new button. And hopefully, I'm going to do the coat up. Jules, if I made the um, I made the last knot kind of far, yeah. I made the last knot kind of far from it. Okay, yeah, it takes a bit of practice. Um, have you got enough thread left to try and do it again, and this time push it down yeah. with your finger? I think so. I'm trying to now. Yeah, I think so. So I should try and be as close as possible to the the center yeah. of the I mean it doesn't it, it doesn't it's not the end of the world if you're like a centimeter off it's just that it's less a little bit less secure it means that that it means that the thread that is left before the knot might go and loosen the rest of mm. all the threads that you've done so that's all but if um it's kind of hard once you've tied one knot it's sometimes it's quite hard to tie another knot over that one because yeah it that's what's it catches happening when you loop it round exactly yeah, that's it what's just happening it takes right a now. bit of practice okay um, nothing i tried two more times and the knot just stays in the same spot yeah <laughs> it happens all the time it's um i um it's really frustrating when it does that but you can um I think it's I mean, it's okay at least. As long as the button's not going to fall off, then. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it will. Yes. And then if Perfect. it does, you just have to do it again. <laughs> yes. With all sewing, practice like with drawing, it's practice. Practice makes practice makes perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So that's buttons. Um, oh wow! I've just realised there's a hole in my coat. Never seen that before, <laughs> which is kind of annoying because it's not that old. It's a perfect this time to realize it now. Yeah, this is this is a bad example because it's really hard to see black thread on black fabric. But I've just noticed that the seam, this is the armhole seam, and it's um, it's kind of come undone. So. I need to um, I need to just lightly hand stitch that there, but I don't know if it's something if it's something to do now. I, if um I had some I was going to show a bit of wool darning, like how to mend holes in wool, if anyone is interested. Or I've got um I've got a little patch um I have a little patch to fix on um. Uh, denim jacket so it's up to you guys whatever anyone wants to maybe do the pack all, all the trousers unless unless people have any other requests i think maybe the patch could be a good start yeah what's um let's hear 
Let's put it to the people. What does everyone want to do? No response. People, <laughs> if you want to write, if you want to write on the on the chat, you can write if you prefer patch. I don't know or, or oh, there's chats coming in. Okay, there's like patch. Patch is patch. Patch. Oh, ta sure. okay. Patch. All right. This is going to be a bit more fiddly. So, uh, okay. Let me just close the. So, um, <clears throat> I don't have any ripped jeans, which is annoying because that would be the perfect thing to do to show you. Um, but this is a very light, um, very, very thin denim sh uh, like work shirt that I love and I have worn forever. It's, you know, those things that you just, they're just, it's my, it's my favorite. Um, and the sleeves, uh, sometimes I, I've realized, I think I have quite short arms cause I tend to like fold my sleeves over a lot and I never shortened them. I just rolled them. I could have just altered them to my arm length, but, um, it started to wear. So I've got that little hole there. So this was just something I found, I found earlier. So I was thinking of putting, um, of putting a little patch on it. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do it in a really contrasting fabric so that you, you can see it more, more clearly. Um, and also just because this is kind of what I've got in the house at the moment, because as you know, I've not gone out anywhere. You can't buy anything. So it's um, make do and mend at home. So what I'm going to do is cut um, a small square. Um, because it's it's a tiny hole, so I think I'll just do. Um, I mean, I, I could I could do this by eye, but I've just got a ruler. I mean, you can use any ruler, and you don't even necessarily have to measure it or anything. But um, I I've got this here, so I think if I do, I'm gonna do four centimeters by. Four. Um, right. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> I actually I was sewing. This is a leftover from something I was making, um, and I want to fold it fold it in on itself. Um, I think, right, this kind of depends where it is, where your hole is, because um, if it's going to be on something that's visible on, you can kind of decide if you want something, if it's going to be visible on both ha sides, how you want to do it. But um, I, I want it, to just peep. I'm just gonna fill the hole basically with fabric and then I'm gonna stitch around it. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing patches. Another thing you can do is, I might have cut this a bit too small. If you fold the edges, so because the edges will fray and the threads will you know, come out. So if you fold the edges on themselves, you can also do external patches which is where you lay the piece of fabric over the top. And then you, you know, that's the classic patch that you just stitch around the edges and you, you have like an added piece. The thing about mending, uh, say denim, or, uh, with nearly, or basically with all holes in, in fabric is, um, is to avoid gathering them in. Because if you, you see that, if you just hold the fabric straight, the hole um, has basically is where the threads have become consumed. So if I tried to stitch this together, it, it's going to make a, um, it's going to pinch, like it, it won't stay flat. It'll have like a gather to it, which I, 
is not ideal. I mean, you can if you want, but it doesn't look so nice. So what you're really basically trying to do is to replace that, um, that, that gap, that, that thread that is no longer there. So to do that, um, so I'm going to turn this inside out. I don't know how fast this is going to be. I think it might take some time. But what I do want to do in the case of this jacket and because of where it is, uh, I want to um, mend. Oh, actually, I've got. Ooh. Hold on. I need a needle. Um, I'm just going to thread up. Oh, and I've lost. Uh, So I'm going to just thread, I'm going to do this, I'm not doing this in blue because um, I'm hoping doing it in white will be more visible to you guys on the video. I think I'll probably have to re <laughs> redo this afterwards because it's quite, okay, so I'm just very quickly tying a knot and I'm going to try and just um, do some light stitches around the hole just to block the fraying to kind of stop it from fraying further. This is, I mean, again, this is just something that I feel like I want to do to secure it, but um, different, you know, there are different techniques and stuff. So I'm just gonna do some very simple uh, can you can you see it clearly if i hold it this close that is that okay um, yes pretty clearly yes i'm just doing uh i think this is known as a running stitch where you just literally go in and out uh, around the fabric it's nothing particularly fancy Actually, I'll show you another thing in a second. Like, it's just going, it's just literally in, out, in, out, like that. I'm just going to stop that there because I'm going to show you something else that could be quite useful with frayed holes. Um, just have to retie. Oh, okay. Do you want to tell yeah. us in the meantime, what do you do? You said that you work in, in clothing. What do you do with clothing? Oh, I work in costume. Um, I work in costume on films and uh, TV dramas. And I also do a little bit of theater, but I'm not a seamstress. I'm, a, I'm an assistant and I do a lot of, um, uh, my main, <clears throat> my main, um, my main job is fitting crowd, fitting um, the essays. Um, so I do research and I help with the sourcing and kind of. Um, put it back up. Um, I help kind of um, find the clothing and from costume houses, rental or buying or um, and. So most of the sewing that happens uh, happens in the workroom with the professional tailors and seamstresses. But I have to be able to, I do need to know how to sew. And that often, like on set, I have to be able to fix things quite quickly and mend things and um, alter things quite fast. So, um, so I have, my, my sewing knowledge is not that of a professional um, a professional maker but um, I'm just gonna go back to this so these are things that I've kind of picked up out of my own interest and then also um, having to kind of fix things and mend things at work but again it's quite it stays on quite a superficial level um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and block that fraying around the edge and I'm going to attempt, if I can now live, to do a very quick blanket stitch, which is basically, I've just passed the needle in once and I knotted the end of the thread. So the, the thread is now blocked. And now I'm gonna 
just a couple of millimeters on from the, the first stitch. I'm going to take, I'm going to go under, push the needle through, pull it up. But before I pull all the thread through, I'm going to pass the needle in through this loop. I hope this is clear enough in terms of the video. So now uh, I'll do it again. So I'm going to come under from from the underside to this side push the needle through and then as i come to the end of the loop just before the all of the thread goes through the fabric pass oh this is confusing also because i'm doing a double thread um, pass the needle through the loop and pull it tight and basically what this does is it creates like an edge against the part that's frayed. Uh, so push through. So you're doing all around the hole, basically. Yeah. And pull through. Um, I'm probably doing it a bit too big right now. And I'm getting all knotted. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I'm going to do it again, push it, pull it through, loop the needle, uh, sorry, push, pull the needle through the loop and I just keep going and that's called a blanket stitch because traditionally you'll see it, you will actually see it on a lot of old blankets. Um, it's a way of blocking, um, for example, when wool blankets that are made out of like felted wool they just got cut and then if you do this running blanket stitch along the edge you kind of stop the fray um, so what you should see on the other side <laughs> you can't see it I should have used like red thread or something but, um, it, it's it's kind of no you can't see it. Sorry, everyone. No, you can, you can of kind of see it. You can kind of see it on, this, on the edge. Okay. I'm not going to carry on with that because otherwise it will take ages. I'm just going to cut it. But I'll show you what, what I would do in an ideal situation is I would press this on itself with the iron. I'd f fold fold the edges in on themselves <clears throat> so that you stop the fray like okay okay to like make the, the edges of the patch more even basically yeah yeah so i've got my iron here but i think i think it's a bit too fiddly to show you right now but basically if you press it in on itself so it's like that mm -hmm. and then the same on the other side and i basically would i make a little square that's kind of got its so mm -hmm. closed in. I think I went a bit too small. Um, and then I'm going to position it over the hole. Again, I'm working on inside out. So I'm on the inside of the sleeve right now. And then I'm just, I've just got some pins. I'm going to just pin it into place so it doesn't move. Like that. And then if I flip it round to the right side, I know now that my patch is in place underneath. And I think I'm sort of making it up now, but I think what I'll do is I'll work by stab stitching my um the outside through to the to the patch a stab stitch is more or less where you're just literally on the actually i'm gonna go from underneath i haven't put a knot in this right now but you go from under to the outside and you make like a tiny 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 stitch so you're literally like um poking it shouldn't be like more than a millimeter and then going straight back in oh dear this is a, this is not going well. <laughs> it's harder than I thought doing it 
in front of you. Um, I didn't really think this one through, I think. I might have to. Sorry, everyone. So you want the stitches on the right side of the fabric to be very minimal, like really small. And then on the, on the underside where you won't see them, they can be longer. And to hold your patch in place, I would do, it's almost, you want to just really catch, catch the fabric, the original fabric pass it through and you're just kind of doing tiny 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 stitches along the edge to hold the patch in place then obviously another option is to do it all on on the machine okay this is this is not going well um shall i carry on or shall i move on to something else sure carry on <laughs> Oh God! Um, right, will take a while. I'm sorry. I've picked to do something that you can't actually. I don't think you can see it very clearly on the video, can you? I think it's somewhat clear, actually. You're basically going all around. Yeah, but you. What I'm trying to do is take the absolute minimum. Let me pull of the blue, the minimum of the blue fabric. Well, the, of the minimum actual. of both. Yeah, the minimum of both. So you hardly see the stitches on either side. Mm -hmm. So I've taken a tiny pinch of that. And now I'm going to go into the blue and literally go under like a, a piece of one piece of thread from the weave. Mm -hmm. And then when I push it through, I can go along into the pink. Okay, but, okay, okay, I see but it. But on the inside of it, so you don't actually see, so you don't actually see it. Cool. Anyway, so I... Yeah, so on the, on the patch itself, you can go longer. You just take a little bit of, on the surface of the exactly, um, yeah. thing you're mending, and then the patch the you original. can go... Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly, so... You can't see, ideally, you can't really see the thread and you don't really want to see it come through on this side, but it's holding it in place. Cool. Um, and then what you can do is once you've secured all your patch in place, mm -hmm. you can then do <clears throat> the stab stitching around the hole to kind of close up the okay so um, to kind of hold it in place and the blanket stitching to hold the fray mm -hmm. um so maybe once i've done it i can i could post you some finished <laughs> pictures of what it would look like but i think it will take too long to do it now live and um it might i think everyone might fall asleep watching i think i think we get the idea that there was Okay. The basic idea of it is definitely understood. Great. So, okay, unless cool. there's any que are there any questions or specific requests that folks want to write on the chat? If there are, otherwise um, got, we'll let Jules go. <laughs> I've got um, I've got stuff to show you quickly how to mend a hole in wool, how to done. Which, yeah, um, show, show us one of those, okay. so that's, that's okay. a handy thing. So the ideal equipment for darning is a darning needle, which looks like this. It's a really big, thick needle. And some darning needles are sharp, some are quite blunt on the top. This, this is a sharp one. I think this is actually a slightly different needle, but anyway it works and the whole point of this needle is that it has a really big eye so that you can fit the wool through it and you can buy I mean, you can use darning cotton which is a slightly thick cotton but if you're mending like a, a woolen jumper or you know something made of wool ideally it would be wool and you can get things like thread plaits Actually, you can buy these out of um, made of just normal cotton sewing thread, and they're a brilliant um, thing to have at home 
as your basic sewing kit because you have all the colors you need and then you just pull out the thread. Um, you can also get darning thread that's already, like if you know you have to mend quite a lot of one color, you can find these in like hab haberdashery stores. I'm not sure, do you call them haberdashery stores in the US? I don't know. Anyway, um, so it sounds like it sounds like that's what it's called. Yes. Like that. Anyway, and then the best bit is an egg. You can get an egg or a mushroom, and they're made of wood, and they're brilliant. And let me just get my jumper. So I've got a hole in my absolute favourite jumper. In the armpit. I've just put a pin in it so that I could find the hole when we showed you. So that's that's the hole. This is um, a good thing to know if you have moths in the house um, who eat your wool and you find all those little holes in your clothes. So basically turn it inside out. You want to work the other way around and put your egg under the fabric, under the hole. And again, it's the same concept as, as the um, hole I was showing you with the denim. The, the threads have just vanished. You know, they've been eaten or torn. And so what you're doing when you're darning is you're basically reweaving the uh, threads that would have been there. So you're creating a crisscross weave across the hole so the the egg or the mushroom um that you put underneath is really important because that's your the surface that you lean on and um, what you do is you take a very little bit of very small piece uh just pop your needle under like that pull your thread through and use a single uh you don't need to double it for this i've already knotted it and then loop around again. I'm doing it in another colour so that you can see it. Um, and that's also like it's quite cool when you done things. Sometimes if you do it in contrasting colours, you can get some nice like sort of spots or patches of it. Well, so pull it through and secure it. And then what you're going to do is basically start just um, just on the edge of where the hole uh, where the hole is. Well, that's what I do anyway. And then start pushing the needle um, oops, in and out of the fabric in very small amounts. I don't know if you can see in and out, in and out. So you'll be able to see the bits of thread across your needle and pull it through like that. And then come round on the other side and you're literally going to go right next to where just move that right next to where that went and do it again and as you start to come across the hole you'll see that your needle will just wherever the wherever there's no uh wool to go through there'll just be a hole that's the idea so thread it through i think um, it's getting dark outside so the light's going um and then again, I'll just do this quickly so that you can start to see the effect. You need to be very careful that you don't pull the hole together when you're doing this. So keep it nicely stretched across, you know, the, the egg. The wooden egg. Pull it through like that. Someone doesn't have the egg or the mushroom. What can someone use, like a bowl? Yes, you could use maybe like a, an egg cup or some, something that's, you need to have the kind of um, spherical shape. Okay, uh, so yeah, not like round, round. Something that you can hold. No, it could be a ball as well. It needs to be a hard surface that the needle's not going to catch into. Okay. But basically now um, I've created these like um, vertical threads. Yeah, that go threads, across. yes. Now I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to go the other way and I'm going to go in and out 
up and down, up um, under and over these verticals that I've just made. So it's basically the es essence of weaving. So I go in and I make sure I catch. Okay, cool. Up and down, up and down, up and down, and pull through. And then the next, try and get the needle right up against where you've just come out. And obviously I'm doing this very quickly. Up and down, up and down like that. And one more. This is, luckily was a small hole, so I can do it quite quickly. And hopefully show you the finished thing. That's it, more or less. I've, I mean, this is very rough, <laughs> what I'm doing right now. But it's basically it. Now, like that. Okay, now I'm going to secure the thread by threading it through a, another piece of wool, like just off the edge of what I've just done. Um, not it. I'm a big fan of the double knot because I don't like stuff coming on. Just snip it. And hopefully, that's it. That's my hole done. Awesome. So it's a bit rough. Um, this, this, um, this jumper is a very fine knit. It's very thin, and I've used a very thick uh, piece of wool that would be ideally um, used for like a chunk, chunky wool knit. So that's why it looks a bit looks a bit big like that. But that's it. That's how you mend a hole. Cool. Thanks so much, Jules. You're welcome. If anyone wants um, machine advice or uh, trouser hem stuff you can just let me know another time cool jess was suggesting a field hockey ball could work as the egg i don't really know what a field hockey ball field looks like hockey ball. <laughs> but I, I don't know what a field <laughs> uh thanks okay yeah i think as long as it's um smooth and the there's no risk of the needle kind of catch going through it yeah and pulling anything out of it then that's fine i guess maybe also like a leather ball you know like um yeah as long as it's smooth and hard just thinking of like just looking around to see if there's ping pong it. ping pong ball maybe ping pong ball yeah that could be good yeah definitely okay. and and you can also use like normal thread as well Obviously, it's going to be trickier because it's thinner. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's oh, I can see pretty hard ball. Thank you. Fantastic. Cool. Button right there. Great. Thank you so much. That was. Um, Thank you, Jules. Thank you so Stay much. Stay safe, everyone. Stay sane. Bye. Bye. Ciao.